Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III motivates us and encourages us to simply just pray for the glory of God. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in over 25 foreign countries. He is the president of Gospel Light Society and Torch Ministries International. Now here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to another prayer motivator devotional broadcast, broadcast number 386. As always, it is so good to be with you today to encourage you to pray. Today I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem entitled, Today Thy Mercy Calls Me by Oswald Allen. Today thy mercy calls me to wash away my sin. However great my trespass, whatever I may have been, however long from mercy I may have turned away, thy blood, O Christ, can cleanse me and make me white today. Today thy gate is open and all who enter in shall find a father's welcome and pardon for their sin. The past shall be forgotten, a present joy be given, a future grace be promised, a glorious crown in heaven. Today the Father calls me, the Holy Spirit waits, the blessed angels gather around the heavenly gates. No question will be asked me how often I have come, although I often have wandered. It is my Father's home. O all-embracing mercy, thou ever open door, what shall I do without thee when heart and eyes run o'er, when all things seem against me? To drive me to despair, I know one gate is open, one ear will hear my prayer. And ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today is Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 9, is really a passage. Uh, our prayer motivated passage from the Word of God today is Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 9 through 13, which reads, and you know it well, some of you at least, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Allow me to share with you some important insights regarding this passage from Matthew Henry's commentary. He said, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We pray that God's kingdom being come, we and others may be brought into obedience to all the laws and ordinances of it. By this let it appear that Christ's kingdom is come. Let God's will be done. And by this let uh, it appear that it is come as a kingdom of heaven. Let it introduce a heaven upon earth. 
We make Christ but a titular prince if we call him king and do not do his will. Having, pr having prayed that he may rule us, we pray that we may in everything be ruled by him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will discuss this passage further in uh, the next broadcast. My personal encouragement to you today is this. A second reason why we faint in prayer is because of delay. <clears throat> we think that God is on our time and that he pays every Friday. But we must remind ourselves that God is on his own time and like the old preachers down uh, south used to say, God may not come when you want him to come, but he's always right on time. Uh, remember, a day is like a thousand years to God, and a thousand years is like one day to God. For those of you who have been saved for a while, we know that time after time, God has delivered us right on time. When things seemed hopeless, God brought us through. He heard our prayer. Bank on it, dear friends. God wants to, God wants to hear your prayer more than you want to pray. He delights in hearing us pray to him. He wants to answer our prayers. He wants to bless us. He delights in blessing us. But most importantly, he wants to hear from us so that he can bless us even more. Our prayer motivator quote today is from Charles H. Kalman. He said, The devil is not put to flight by a courteous request. He meets us at every turn contends for every inch, and our progress has to be registered in heart's blood, tears, and prayer. Right where you are, you ought to say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator devotional today is part 17 of our series titled, Does God Work Miracles Today? from Dr. John R. Rice, that Prince of Prayer uh, and author of the best-selling book, Prayer Asking and Receiving. He goes on to say, Walking down an aisle in a strange audience, I felt impressed to lay my hand upon a man's shoulder and ask him if he were saved. Immediately he began to tremble, and then weep. He told me that he was not. In a moment or two he trusted in Christ and was happily saved. There were few unsaved people present. What led me to select the one man who was already concerned from the few unsaved people in that great audience? Was it natural or supernatural? Was it human or divine? Many thousands of others have had leading as direct as that, but we must remember that it is the Holy Spirit himself who works miracles. It was the Holy Spirit who raised Christ from the dead. And in Ephesians 1, 19 and 20, Paul prayed that New Testament Christians should know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us ward. Who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and Romans 8 11 says but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you the Holy Spirit raised up Christ from the dead. It is the same Holy Spirit that will raise our bodies. Now, dear friend, it is time for us to pray for our miracle. 
Now, dear friend, please join me in prayer. Holy Father God, we pray together in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you for your love, your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and all that he means to this world and all that he means to us personally. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit and for the gift of your Holy Word. Lord, we individually confess our sins, our faults, and our failures to you. Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins as we from our hearts, by your grace, forgive others. And we pray that you would empty us of anything that is not like you. Help us to die to self daily and fill us afresh and anew with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, for every pastor, every church leader, every missionary around the world who stands for you and who is uh, truly helping your people. We pray also for the healing of every marriage and every family. We pray, Lord, for the healing of every church, for the revival of every church through repentance. Lord, we pray for over three million people to come to know you as Savior, and we pray for the healing of this nation. If you're going to tarry your coming, we pray for an awakening to take place. Uh, Holy Father God, we also pray uh, for the leadership, guidance, and direction, and wisdom for our president and uh, for all of the governmental officials who run this country, as well as all other countries. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem as well. And now, Lord, we pray for three people who have sent in prayer requests to our ministry here, uh, Gospelite Society. We pray for Jessica in Sweden. Please heal her of the stomach pain that she is experiencing. We pray for Giannis in Colombia. Give her family a healing and restoration. We pray, Lord, for Jennifer in Birmingham, Alabama. Help her uh, financial situation to get better. Help her out of tax trouble and help the repairs that her car needs to be uh, affordable is her request. We pray that uh, you would uh, bless these. We pray for the salvation of all of their family members as well. We pray that you would rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his hosts from these three families. Holy Father God, as we continue in prayer, we pray for the following people who have trusted you as Savior, who have received you in their hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would confirm them in the faith and have them to grow in the faith to become the spirit-filled Christians, the strong Christians that you want them to be. We pray specifically for Hopra in Andhra, Pradesh in India, Gauss in Karnataka, India, Mishael, rather, in Kenya. Lord, strengthen these in the faith. Help us to do our part in discipling them. And Lord, help them to find a good Bible-believing local church to go to where they can grow and fellowship. Now, Lord, we also pray for the following people who have been saved for a while, but who have rededicated their lives to you. We rejoice with these as well as the others who have just gotten saved uh, in their decision. And we pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. Uh, we pray specifically for Magnus in uh, Porthacourt Rivers State, Nigeria, Lindsay in Kentucky, and Denise in Byram, Mississippi. Lord, we pray that you would fill these with your Holy Spirit and help them to stand in these last days. Now, dear friend, before I leave you, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Please allow me to show you how you can get to know him today. All you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again 
the third day according to the scriptures. And you will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. And like so many millions of others down through the years, you will get to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior personally. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, Jesus Christ, should not perish. Perish where? In hell, but have everlasting life in heaven with God. The Bible also states in the book of Romans 10, 9 and 13 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Dear friend, if you are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, for your salvation right now. Please pray with me the following simple prayer and mean it from your heart right where you are. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you just accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you prayed that prayer amended from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, you are now saved and you're on your way to heaven. And I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life. And that is receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to GospelLightSociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Until next time, my beloved, remember, pray, think, do. God bless you.